Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. Our first lesson is from the second book of Samuel. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children, which he ha- and he ate of its meager fare and drank from his cup, lay in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare the, for the wearer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the guest who had come. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to him, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anoint you king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do evil what is in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, 
I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is parts of 51. Please say it in unison with me. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you were justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for the truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, make me hear the joy of gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all of my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Good morning. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you are called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that, me, so that he might fill all things. Some gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the full measure, ooh, to the measure to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and flown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body joined in it together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the next day, when the people who remained after the feeding of the 5,000 saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As someone put it to me a few weeks ago, we've been reading from the Old Testament about people behaving badly. I would say that's a bit of an understatement in this case. We've been reading about King David, who began as a shepherd boy, tending the flocks of his family, who went from the pastures and flocks to the battlefield, where he slew the giant Goliath with a sling and a few small stones. David gained renown as a warrior for Israel and served under King Saul, eventually becoming anointed as king himself. As king, he expanded the territory of Israel, gained power and influence in the surrounding regions, and established the great city of Zion, and unified the tribes of Israel together under one kingdom. In addition to being a warrior and a legendary king, David is also a musician and poet and somewhat of a mystic. He's traditionally held to be the composer of the Psalms. So David looms large in the history of the nation of Israel, but he is also as complicated and broken as any one of us, like all of the figures in the Old Testament. And in this particular story, the one which we've been reading over the past few weeks, David's sin gets out of control. David hits rock bottom, so to speak. And someone described, a pastor once described David's sin in this story to me as 
kind of like a crack in a piece of glass. If a small pebble or something hard hits glass and makes a little crack in it, sometimes it's so small you can barely see it. But if you put any kind of pressure on it, or even just ignore it, it can spread and grow until everything shatters. And that's sort of what happens to David and to his kingdom here. The problems for David in this story begin when he is looking out of the window of his house and sees a woman bathing on her roof next door. Now why she's bathing on the roof, I don't exactly know. But in any case, David sees her and he desires her. And she is a married woman. And David's sin and problems begin right there. He lusts after this woman in his heart. And so the glass cracks. David says to himself, I want her, and the king gets what he wants. So he sends for her, and she lies with him. David, now in addition to committing, to committing lust in his heart, in his mind, has committed adultery with his body. He has sinned against this woman, against himself, and against God. The crack in the glass grows and spreads. Now, it is important here to recognize the unheard voice of Bathsheba, this woman with whom he lies. Like so many women in Scripture, her voice is sort of between the lines. We don't hear what she feels or says directly. We can only speculate what goes through her mind or passes through her heart through this story. We don't know whether or not she wanted this kind of attention from the king, but we do know that the king gets what he wants, and that if a person values their life, when the king calls, they will obey. So it's very likely that in addition to lust, David commits a sort of sin of coercion and violence here, that this woman had very little say in what happened. The crack in his glass grows. And so later, this woman writes to David, saying she is pregnant. And he summons her husband, Uriah, to his house. But Uriah, out of loyalty and respect to his king and country, refuses to come. So knowing this man to be loyal to his king and his country, David sends Bathsheba's husband Uriah out to the battlefield and then orders the other troops to withdraw so that he will be killed. David condemns this man to death and commits murder by all but drawing the sword himself. The crack in his glass grows and seems about to shatter everything. David sends for Bathsheba again, and she becomes his wife now that her husband is dead. It seems, perhaps, that he will get away with what he has done, that no one will know about it, that he will avoid scandal. But Scripture says the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. I, I mean, I can't imagine why. So a prophet with a good, strong Hebrew name comes to David and tells him a story. The prophet says, there was a poor man who had one little ewe lamb, and he loved it like his own child. He held it to his bosom and fed it from his own table. It was all he had. Meanwhile, there was a rich man who had abundant flocks and pastures. And when someone came to the rich man, he did not want to sacrifice his own lamb, so he took the ewe lamb from the poor man and slaughtered it and gave it to his guest. And David said, who is this man? He deserves to die. And the prophet Nathan says, you are the man. And here for David, the glass shatters. He realizes what he has done and that in some ways it is too late for him to escape the consequences. Nathan speaks for God and says to David, Other men will lie with your wives in plain sight. Your family will be divided against itself. And your kingdom will fall. 
David knows it is too late to escape the consequences of his actions, but not too late to find forgiveness. He says, I have sinned before the Lord. He recognizes the depths of his own sin and brokenness, and so he proclaims it. Tradition holds it that David is the composer of the Psalms, and that at this point in his life, David composes Psalm 51, the psalm which we read this morning and which we also read on Ash Wednesday and other penitential occasions. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. This is a difficult psalm that recognizes our own brokenness and separation from God and others. And on occasions like that are when we read it. But it ends on a note of hope. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Grace does not come easily for David, but it does come. It is too late for David to escape the consequences of his actions, His family will be divided, his kingdom will split in two, its people will be defeated and go into exile and be scattered throughout the world. But generations later, another boy will be born who is also a shepherd and a king, born not in a palace but in a manger between animals. This particular boy, rather than amassing wealth and power for himself, will dedicate his life to the poor and the outcast. Rather than committing lust and adultery, he will commit himself to a life of chastity and dedication to God. Rather than condemning a man to death, he will be condemned himself. Rather than being convicted in private, by a prophet who says, you are the man, this man will be condemned in public by Pilate, who will hold him before the crowds and say, here is the man. And here is the man, the man who will become what David could have been and more, the man who is what you and I can be by grace, a child of God. The man who would not conquer the world through violence, but create a new kingdom by taking the violence of the world upon himself, a kingdom that is not of this world. He would die upon the cross and rise again so that you and I can live and reign with him. He offers his life for all broken people just like you and me. So I find these stories, strange and difficult as they are, to be encouraging. Because from the very lineage of David comes Jesus of Nazareth, born in the same city, even to the same family. And if God can work good and bring redemption, through a man as beautifully broken as David was, perhaps there is some good that he can do through you and me as well. All of us have cracks in our glass. Perhaps yours is so small that people can barely perceive it, or perhaps it is so large that you already feel shattered. Wherever you are, Jesus stretches out his hands to you and offers you his spirit to heal you and make you whole and make you one and let you live with him forever. Jesus offers to make our broken windows into windows for his glory so that his light may shine through us. It is never too late to find that, never too late to find that grace, to let it live in us as well. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand and affirm your faith in our Lord and his church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the people are on page seven. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and for the just and proper use of your creation. For the religions of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this gathering. Please watch over Russ, Marge, Martha and Sue on their journey. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom.
Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. First, the prayer for spiritual communion for those who could not be with us in person today. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. And now the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated for just a moment. <clears throat> Our worship schedule continues here at Middleham and St. Peter's with worship here on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. in person and live stream, and at St. Peter's Chapel at 9 a.m. on Wednesdays for Holy Eucharist and Prayers for Healing. Um, we do know that uh, the numbers for COVID are going up and we're paying attention to that situation. Um, this Wednesday, we have a call with our diocese, our monthly conference call. So we are going to listen for their guidance and see what, how they direct us and uh, keep everybody informed after that as to whether or not we need to change our procedures here, okay? We don't have plans to do that, but we'll do as they direct us, okay? So just so you know that's coming, we'll make sure that everybody knows what's going on, all right? Um, we uh, still have planned for August 29th, a celebration of Not So New Ministry. It'll be my one year anniversary with you, and so Bishop Bob Eloff plans to come down for that. That's here, same time, uh, Sunday, August 29th at 9.30 a.m. Um, one uh, piece of news that I do need to share with you uh, that I'm sorry to say is that Russ Horton died last night at about 6 p.m. Uh, many of you know Russ, who's very involved in this church and other churches in the diocese. Uh, he passed away at Asbury yesterday evening. So some of you have been there to support his family already, and thank you for that. Uh, we have no uh, plans. We haven't talked with the family about the funeral yet. This was just yesterday evening. So as soon as we hear about that um, and know those plans, we will communicate that to you as well. Okay? So please keep their family in your prayers at this time. Thank you. Jim, did you have a few announcements to make? I do. Thank you. Uh, if you when you came into the parking lot this morning, you'll notice that we finished one of our inReach projects, which was to put the uh, guardrail up. Uh, so as you back out of the spaces on the far side, you don't go over the edge. Uh, we do have another project coming up that was delayed. Uh, we plan to work at Father Nathan's house on August the 20th and 21st. Uh, if you plan to be there, please let me know. Uh, we do need a few folks to do uh, some electrical work, some work woodworking outside, and some other work around the house uh, to help him get that house ready uh, after he goes to settlement. Uh, and we're looking forward to doing that. Uh, lastly, we have a playground project that will come up later this month. I just have to set a date for that. Uh, and for those of you that have seen the, the bulletin, you'll notice that uh, we took the carpet up in Middleham Chapel. Uh, we noticed, uh, took one section up, Father Nathan and I, and found that uh, there is some very pristine and very nice looking wood floor underneath that carpeting, which we will have refinished uh, before the uh, services uh, resume there in September. 
Great, thank you, Jim. Um, one more note is the health fair September, September 11th, 10 to 1 um, here. Uh, we'll have a, a number of services here available for people to find out about how to stay healthy in uh, Calvert County. So please do join us for that. Am I missing anything? Any other announcements at this time? What's that? <laughs> at this Friday, right? Yeah. Okay, yes. I have to check with Ann because sometimes I get these dates wrong. But this Friday um, is our next uh, community campfire night, 7 p.m. here at the fire pit behind Smith Hall. I was all ready to go this past Friday, and I sent Ann a text message. It said, I have s'mores things, and she said, well, that's great, but it's, it's next Friday. So I said, okay. Uh, so this Friday, please join us for um, community campfire night. We've been talking about home and homelessness. So it's been a really rich discussion with people who gather there. So. Yes, Dale. Light there are light bulbs in the back still, energy efficient light bulbs. So take those and let them light up and you can have a good idea. So. Okay, please stand for our closing hymn.